Hey Tommy, what would you say is the most anticipated new car of the year? Well, it's got to be the Volkswagen Touareg. Nope. Try again. Well, it's got to be the Chevy Spark EV. The one we just bought? The one we just bought. I would wish that were the case, but no, it's not. It's got to be the Ford Bronco. And you just got back, my man, from actually getting a full two days of Bronco fever? Yeah, I uh, <laughs> flew out to Austin, Texas with Andre to experience the new two and four door Bronco. And in this podcast slash video, we're not going to be talking about any news. We're going to be dedicating the whole episode to the new Bronco. So we're going to go in depth on all the different models. We're going to talk about well, pretty much everything there is to talk about. And then, of course, if you want to see how good it is off-road, there's a video coming. Isn't that right? Over at TFL Off-Road on the 28th, which is a Monday, we are going to have our first off-road driving impressions and everything you need to know about the Bronco in the Dirt video. But just like when the new J. L. Wrangler came out, we're doing Bronco Week on TFL Car. So there is a series of five videos that we're publishing over at TFL Car, and you can go watch, uh, that basically uh, goes over every aspect of the new Bronco. And I have to thank our friends over at Five Star Tuning for making that possible. That's right, yep. So they are sponsoring this week's Bronco coverage. And I got to say, Dad, that was a busy two days, Andre, I had. Yeah, tell me about uh, the setup there. So you guys flew to Austin, Texas, because we got emails from people saying, hey, uh, I saw that you're into Austin. Uh, can we come and watch you film the Bronco? So you get there, and what did Ford have prepared for you? We flew in on Monday. We landed at about 1130, and then they shuttled us to downtown Austin, Texas, where they had a big tent set up with some exhibits. So we got to see the... Uh, prototype version of the Bronco in foam when they were doing the design. We got to see the rolling chassis, um, some of the durability testing that they put the vehicle through with one of their race trucks, and some of the cool accessories that they, they're working on. Wow, okay, so uh, how many Broncos did they have? A lot, like 60. <laughs> 6 0 or yeah. 1 6? No, like 6 0. They had a Oh ton my gosh. Of them. And I take it they had all the different models and specs and you know configurations. Almost all of the different specs, that's yeah. right. So we uh, basically assembled downtown. They gave us a presentation. They talked about the interesting specs in the Bronco. They talked about why it's better than the Wrangler. They certainly were... They uh, did, really. That's yeah. pretty ballsy. Yeah, they were really pushing the Bronco versus its competition. And then outside, they had a little courtyard set up with a bunch of different Broncos. And we got to choose which ones we wanted to explore and drive and uh, go exploring in. And which one did you choose? Um, honestly, we were there so long at the courtyard filming yeah. that the Bronco we chose came and went about three times because people just kept driving them away. Yeah. Um, and it was like a rolling program, so they kept inviting more and more journalists in throughout the day. And Andre and I were spending so much time at the courtyard trying to get our filming done that um, we uh, <laughs> the one we chose kept leaving and leaving. So what would you end up with? Well, finally, at the end of our filming there, before we did the drive route to the hotel, we chose a four-door Bronco with the off-road spec called the Badlands Edition and a manual transmission. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and then what was day two like? So I take it you got to do a lot of filming and a lot of Bronco-ing. So what happened day two? Well, we're still on day one, so we leave. Oh, okay, on, more uh, day one. Wow. Yeah, we leave Austin. We drive. We're supposed to drive about two and a half hours on road through the nice scenic hills to get a feel for the Bronco. The hill country. But we're running so late trying to film that we just go direct to the hotel, um, and then at the hotel we're supposed to luxuriate for a little bit and get unpacked and get ready, and then we were supposed to go to dinner where they had like a little exhibition with more Broncos. But of course, Andre and I are frantically trying to get our videos done, so we go from the hotel, slam our stuff in the room get in the shuttle, go to where dinner's at, where they've got more Broncos to continue our filming. Wow, it's like Bronco mania, dude. I mean, there's just so many Broncos. I, I saw your first two videos, uh, the colors, the model choices, the are, are incredible. If you guys you know want to see that first hands-on video, go over to TFL Car and check it out. All right, so more filming, then dinner, obviously, and then what about day two? Well, we're still on day one. Oh my God. Because there's even more to talk what, about. Was there a Bronco night driving? They had some interesting um, exhibitions there before dinner. Yeah. So they had a goat wrangling thing. What? Yep. No, real goats? Andre and I missed the beginning of it, of course. But yeah, they had this big... Uh, it wasn't a real goat. It was like a... Um, <laughs> 
a model goat and they had a real cowboy <laughs> and they were showing you how to lasso this model goat. It was kind of a strange thing. Right. But they also had sway bar disconnect demonstrations, turn assist demonstrations, all that. And even more interesting is they had two brand new Jeep Wrangler JLs. And I don't know how or where they got them from, but they were brand new on temporary tags. So I wonder if they were lent to them from a dealer or if they actually went out and purchased these two vehicles. But they brought a competing, they bought a competing uh, Wrangler JL Rubicon and a Sahara. Yeah, I, I suspect Ford has enough money to buy two Wranglers. And I what mean, they, maybe they were lent, but they were brand, brand new. And what do they do with them? What were they doing with the Wranglers? They were pushed off to the side and then... <laughs> It, you could have gone and driven them on the street loop, okay. but almost nobody did, which I thought was interesting. Really? Um, yes. But Andre and I made a, a big deal to kind of go over there and check them out and do a comparison with the new Bronco. By the way, speaking of the Wrangler, we've got a pretty exciting announcement at the end of this podcast that Tommy is going to tell you. Uh, so uh, we'll save that big Wrangler news at the end, right? Okay. You know what we're talking about, right? Friday, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. So, so we'll save that because we don't want to get into that. But stay tuned. It's pretty exciting, at least for from a Tommy perspective. So they had the two Wranglers there, which nobody drove. Uh, and then what else did they do? I mean, let's talk about the sway bar disconnect, right? So I suspect it's easier on a Wrangler because it has a solid axle than on the Ford with independent uh, suspension. I can't talk about that. It's a driving impression. Okay. Well, we can't talk about that, apparently. Yeah. All right. Even though there was no driving involved. Well, yeah, because the sway bar disconnect was out in the dirt, and okay. they, they was while you were driving. So there are, just so you guys know, there are you know certain rules that Ford puts on these events, uh, and that basically is for all the journalists to be able to come out with their story at the same time. Uh, and so you know when uh, a manufacturer comes to us and they say, uh, you guys have to honor uh, an embargo, we always uh, agree. We've never broken an embargo, even though there's a rumor out there that we have when we had some issues with Ford. It wasn't because of an embargo. It was because of some images that we published, nothing to do with an embargo. Uh, and we always honor those. Um, and and then, you know, usually the embargo is you can talk about the vehicle as much as you want, but you can't talk about driving impressions. And then the question is, what are driving impressions? We tend to think driving impressions are things like, hey, I get behind the wheel and, you know, this is what it drives like. Uh, but some manufacturers take that, uh, you know, to mean all sorts of other things. Uh, and so because, you know, we're the guest of the manufacturer, we honor their rules. That's right. But that's okay because there's still so much we can talk about uh, on the new Bronco and the goods and the bad. So we'll, we'll keep going with all the right, podcast. So, so now you've got the goat that got wrangled. Yep, they did the goat wrangling. And then we had dinner, which was in this really interesting building. So basically the whole event was at something called the Off Rodeo. And this is kind of like a Porsche driving school, but for Bronco owners. So if you buy a Bronco, you can go attend this event and there's gonna be four of them around the country. They did it with the Raptor too. Yes, but this was pretty nuts. Okay. So it was on 300 acres in Austin, Texas. This is a, one of the first ones. And they built specifically for this event a brand new facility, a brand new building. Um, wow. With the, everything was Bronco themed. The, the vans to shuttle you to and from the hotel, they're Bronco themed. They play movies in the van. I mean, it's like going to Disneyland for Bronco. They really, really wanted this to be an experience. So the whole um, journalist event was also at this off rodeo location in Austin, Texas. So we had dinner in this cool building, very nice dinner, and really appreciated that. And then uh, went to bed. Uh, well, I didn't actually get any sleep that night because I was editing like crazy throughout the night to uh, get our content out. And then we wake up, 7 in the morning, we head back to the off-roadio, and then that's when we had our off-road drives. They had three different off-road loops for us to do. And then um, they also had kind of a, a little expose where they showed off the different accessories. They had an old Bronco there you could go poke around in. Are, are, are accessories driving impressions? Could accessories we... are not driving impressions. Okay, so I don't we can so. talk about those. Okay. What, what, what accessories do they have? They had, um, for example, um, like roof rack accessories. Uh -huh. They showed off the winch accessory, uh -huh. which I thought was pretty interesting. And the winch is uh, integrated into... Uh, well, it's not really integrated into the front. It kind of tacks onto the front of the vehicle. Like a Wrangler? Not really. Okay, how is it different? So in a Wrangler, the winch actually inserts into the bumper. Right. In the Bronco, it kind of is inserted into the front of the bumper, but not within it. It's in its like own little cradle that is then attached to the front of the bumper. So it kind of sticks out past the bumper, where in the Jeep it's more in the bumper. Yeah, I mean, Jeep sells, you know, a winch-ready bumper, right, where you basically buy a winch and then you basically attach it to the bumper uh, with a winch plate. 
we're, we're making this very confusing. Let so, me, so you sound like you've described exactly what the Jeep does, in my mind. Yes, I did a very poor job of that. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of what the Jeep does. So there's no winch plate. The, the Jeep, it, with the Jeep, the winch lives in the bumper. Yeah. With the Bronco, the winch lives in front of the bumper. Okay, so it's stuck on front of it, not on top of it. Yeah, that's kind of a good way of looking uh, at right, it. All right, okay. But apparently, yeah. and I think I can talk about this, apparently they did a ton of crash testing both with and without the winch. Okay. To which make I sure. thought was interesting. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, let's keep going. So uh, now you had this um, Bronco Rodeo with all the different accessories. Uh, what else did you guys do? Um, well, that was that was it. All right. Yeah, so they gave us three different off-road drive routes to go explore the new Bronco, and then we were on a shuttle that afternoon to the airport, and it was the busiest day and a half I've ever had in my yeah, entire life. You guys knocked out of the ballpark. I mean, to produce as many videos as you did is not easy, and if you guys are at all YouTube savvy, you'll understand just how much work goes into producing that much uh, video content. So thank you very much, Tommy, for doing that. But let's get to the stuff that people want to talk about, which is, you know, hands-on with the Bronco. So let's start Let's start by talking about model lineup, right? So in the Wrangler, uh, we'll start with that because let's face it, the um, Bronco competes directly. I mean, it's going like, like I'm doing the two fists into each other. That's what you're hearing my rings hit. Uh, if you're not watching this, uh, they, they're direct competitors. Um, and so with the Wrangler lineup, you start out with a sport. Yep. Uh, and then you graduate to a, um, is it Willis or Willys? There's a big controversy. <laughs> I think it's Willys. I'm going to go with Willys. Okay. And then you go up to the Sahara, which is like the city slicker. And then you go up to the Rubicon. So basically there are four models. And, and, and the base model, the sport, has standard four-wheel drive but doesn't get all of the off-road goodies. Then you get more off-road goodies as you work your way up to the Rubicon. And of course Rubicon has three connectable, I mean three uh, lockers, center, front, rear, uh, disconnectable sway bars, you know, crazy approach angles, crazy departure angles, uh, you know, all the stuff that, you know, people have associated with the Jeep. So tell me about how does the Bronco lineup go? Well, if you look at the trim by trim, it actually lines up pretty much identically to the Jeep lineup. Okay, so tell me about the different lineups and, and what they what you get, or so as much as you remember. In the entry level Wrangler uh, line, you've got the Sport. Right. For the Bronco, the comparable is called the Base. Yep. And then, if you want a slightly more fancy Sport, Jeep offers a model called the Sport S. That's got leather wrapped steering wheel, um, power windows, that kind of thing. Bronco has a direct competitor called Big Bend. Okay. The Willys version of the Jeep is so, kind of... And we're going with Willys, not Willis. Yeah, we're going with Willys. Okay. The Willys version of the Jeep is kind of the everyman off-roader. The Bronco equivalent is called the Black Diamond, the everyman off-roader. Okay. The luxury version of the Wrangler is called the Sahara. The City Slicker, yeah. The luxury version of the Bronco is called the Outer Banks. Okay. And then you got Rubicon. On the Jeep side, you've got Badlands on the Ford side. And then it gets a little bit kind of weird because then Ford also has a model called Wild Track, which they say is more for high speed kind of desert running. Okay, more like a Raptor, you know, in terms of a, 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 a desert running vehicle, right? Mm, not really, more of like a Mojave. So, well, which is like a Raptor. Yeah, but the Raptor's extra wide and it's got super special suspension. And it's a pre runner. It's a, it's a wild, Baja pre runner. Honestly, the Wild Track is kind of a decontented Badlands right. with All some right. slightly okay. different modes that they right. that they tout as being the, the, the desert running version. Okay. So, perfectly line up with each other there. They yeah. also line up pretty much identically in both two and four door configurations. Wait, 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 hold on. Unless I missed it, isn't there a Sasquatch model too? Well, so Sasquatch is a little bit weird. Okay. Sasquatch is kind of a unique thing to the Bronco. So a Sasquatch package is the off-road group that you can tack on to any one of the different trims. So in a Wrangler, if you want the ultimate hardcore off-roader, you have to get the Rubicon. But with the Ford, you can get a base model and then all of a sudden tack on this several thousand dollar option called Sasquatch, which elevates it to that of a Rubicon fighter. So that gives you like the locking diffs. It gives you 34.4 inch tall tires gives you different suspension and a wider body kit. Um, that's a really smart idea, and I wish that Jeep would kind of incorporate that into the Wrangler lineup. How much is a Sasquatch package on top of? It depends. All right. Usually it's it's like upwards of $5,000. Now, did they announce pricing yet? Or is yeah. That, okay, so with Jeep, let's talk about pricing. So we're kind of, I'm just setting the, the, the stage here so people know what we're talking about before we get into the nitty gritty. So with Jeep, you can start out 
if you get a base model at like twenty eight thousand, right? Yep. And then if you go all in with a Rubicon, you know, if you check all the boxes, you're probably up to like almost sixty thousand, or maybe just a little bit above sixty, right? Yeah, and it's the same thing with the Ford. I think the Ford starts a couple hundred dollars less than the Wrangler, and then it goes all the way up well into the you know mid sixty thousand dollar range. Okay, all right, all right. Um, so let's talk about powertrains. That's next. So in, in a Jeep, uh, there's a boatload of powertrains. Obviously, the one that everybody uh, uh, buys, or at least has been buying, is the Pendastar V6, right? That's the that's the most common one, 3.6 liter V6. It can come with either a uh, six-speed manual, or is it a five-speed? Six-speed manual and an eight-speed automatic, right? Um, then, if you want to, you know, get a little funkier with your powertrain, uh, there is a um, diesel, which just gobs of torque. Yep. Uh, there's also uh, a two-liter turbo. Yep. Uh, and then the newest one, uh, actually the two newest ones, I'll leave the, the, the bad boy. And we have, when I said 60000 I didn't include this last one because obviously that's a whole different world. But then you can get up to uh, the new 4 by e which is a 2-liter turbo with a 21-kilowatt-hour battery, if I remember right, plug-in hybrid. It's the plug-in hybrid. It's 21-hour. You can do like 40 miles of range, give or take. No, it's, I think it's 18 kilowatt-hours and it? it's 21 miles of range. All right, so I got it backwards. All right, and then, of course, uh, the one that, you know, most Jeep enthusiasts lust after is a new 392, uh, which is a big old V8 Hemi that they stuck in. And those guys start at, oh God, they're like 77, I think, and go up from there. So the Ford only offers two powertrains currently. Mm. There's a 2.3-liter four-cylinder turbo out of the Ranger and the 2.7-liter twin-turbo V6 out of the F-150. And there are two transmission options, a 10-speed automatic and a 7-speed manual. You can only get the 7-speed manual with the 2.3-liter turbo, kind of like how in the Jeep you can only get the 6-speed manual with the Pentastar V6. So they're, they're locking out the manual to that engine option in particular. Now, I do think that there's a lot of similarities here. At one point, the go-to engine in the Wrangler was the Pentastar V6, but if I kind of see where the winds are shifting within that company, it seems like they're really pushing the 2-liter turbo as the go-to engine option. And I think it might even be the standard powertrain now. The, the one that's actually the bargain in the Wrangler is the 4 by e because of the way it's packaged. You basically get a Rubicon and then you get all the advantages of the tax credit, right, which is 7500 federally or at least a portion thereof, plus whatever local tax credits you get for the plug-in. Uh, and so it actually comes out cheaper to get the 4 by e if you're going for the Rubicon. And so that one's become the one, the kind of the darling of recently of the, of the Wrangler lineup. And that one is also a 2-liter. I think the 2-liter is standard. Someone will correct me in the comments below. It might have changed. Um, but uh, so Ford, they give you these options pretty much across the line, whether or not you want the 2.3 turbo or the, the V6 turbo. And it's... You know, it's fewer choices in what Jeep offers. And then it, that's before we mentioned the 6.4 V8 in the Wrangler, like you talked about in the 392. There's rumors. I, I, I kind of put that one aside because it's its own beast. Yeah, there's rumors that Ford is going to Do a offer version, yeah. a plug in hybrid version of yeah. the Bronco and maybe even a like a Warthog, like a crazier. Um, you know, over the top version of, of the Bronco as well. Yeah, I, I don't want to go down that road because you can speculate forever. That's for a different video. But since you got hands on the real thing, the thing that's actually out there. And by the way, guys, uh, as much as it pains me to say this, uh, uh, sold out is uh, the two letter, the two words that every time I think of Bronco, I hear because uh, I'm pretty bummed that they have done a really good job of selling them because I think the first two years of production are almost completely sold out, like 100,000 units. And I'm only bummed not because, um, you know, well, maybe because I, I think it's a really cool vehicle and I think everybody should have a chance. And, and we have all of our fans and viewers who are out there like super excited to get one. But if you haven't ordered one by now, chances are you're probably not going to be able to get one, unfortunately. Uh, and you probably can get one in the secondary market, right? But I think they're going to go for at least in the next six months, you know, a premium. So getting one at getting one at MSRP this year is going to be almost impossible, I would say, unless you've ordered it. Ford says they have 125,000 orders. Yeah, I believe it for yeah. the the full size yeah. Bronco. Yeah, and it's worth noting too that um, 
I mean, people say that they've seen it running around and that, that they've seen a bunch of them. That's the little baby Bronco. So there's also a model called the Bronco Sport. No relation to the big one. That is based on like the uh, escape. the escape. Yeah, it's like a normal little crossover. So, yeah, so just take that. So if you see a Bronco running out there and it's got the little letters of sport underneath the Bronco, this is a whole different vehicle. We're talking about the big boy Bronco. Probably seen the yeah, the sports running around, but the the big one is just hitting dealers now. I think I just read a thing that the first customer got theirs um, at the dealership today. Yeah, they started building them like a week ago, but the first um, the first run of them is going to be the ones that the dealers get as kind of the show ones, you know, the ones that they can sell. Apparently, this one is actually a customer one. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. mean that they can't build customer ones, but I, I think a lot of them are going to be the dealer ones. But anyway, you'll see you'll start seeing them out there on the road. So I'm sure we'll start getting pictures of them from our great uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, so let's talk about now. Now, so we've gone through the models, we've gone through the powertrains, and now let's talk about the configurations, right? So in a Wrangler, you can get a you can get the two door or the four door right the unlimited uh, they of course come as a soft top or as a hard top you can get freedom panels on it that you can remove to make it kind of a target top uh, what, uh, of course you can get the uh, you know the fold down soft top what what are the options in a Bronco Tommy very similar okay you can get it in both two and four door versions yep Unlike the uh, Jeep, though, you can get the luxury version, the Outer Banks, in a two-door. So if you want a Sahara in the, the Wrangler lineup, you have to get a four-door. In the Ford, you can get it with two doors, which is kind of interesting. Once again, hard and soft top versions. And like you said, the Freedom Panel. So Jeep offers this feature where the front portion of the hard top is removable with a couple of thumb, thumb uh, half turns. And then they plop out, and then you've got open air in the front of the Jeep. The Ford has taken it a step farther, which I think is a really smart idea. If you get a four-door Bronco, there's an option for a modular hardtop, and you can remove the front portion of the panels over the driver and passenger seats, but you can also remove the panel over the rear seats by just flicking a couple of quarter-turn levers. Okay. So you don't have to get any tools out to remove the whole rear of the hardtop. You can if you want to. And can you stow those in the vehicle? Um, you can stow the front ones, but the they said that the middle one is too, I think it's too wide, so it doesn't quite fit. All right, and there's a big caveat here because what's going on with the hardtop? Well, um, we have heard rumblings that the hardtop is delayed because of production issues. Yeah, I think they blamed Wabasto. And if you don't know who Wabasto is, it's a German company, and they build every soft top to every vehicle that you've ever heard of, except for the Wrangler, which is done by Best Top. So every other vehicle that has a, a drop top is usually a Wabasto. They, they do one on the Wrangler, too. Oh, they do a Wrangler one, I too. I think the power top is a Wobasto top. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So uh, Ford basically blamed Wobasto on this, and they said that they, I, I, I know it's a finger-pointing game, but definitely uh, the hard top is a little delayed. But uh, the, the interesting thing is that picture I saw, that customer that's getting their first one, yeah. that one's a hard top. All right, there you go. So I, I know that because we're trying to get one. We're trying to buy one. There's no secret there. I don't want to talk about it because I like to... You know, I like to underpromise and overperform, and so you know we're trying to work a charity thing where we're going to get one for charity, uh, and uh, hopefully that'll come through. But until we actually have it, I don't want to promise it. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm just you know holding my crossing my fingers. Um, anyway, just a little TFL stuff, TFL news there. All right, so uh, how about the doors? Are they removable? Just like the Jeep, the doors are removable. Very different idea though than how Jeep has implemented them. How so? Well, the Jeep has a traditional door with a frame that extends all the way around the window so it continues all the way around the side of the window then top and then down the Ford has a frameless door kind of like you'd find in a Mustang so the window does not have a frame extending around it now the benefit of that is you can roll the window all the way down into the door and then when you remove the door it's got a bag that it inserts into and you can store the four doors in the trunk of the four-door Bronco Wow, so there's actually a place for the doors. That's pretty uh So in a Jeep, you, have, you take them off and then you leave them at home or at your hotel or whatever. But on the uh, Ford, apparently, they will fit all in the storage compartment. How about the, how about the rearview mirrors? With the Jeep, you also take off the rearview mirror. Yeah, on the Ford, they are mounted to the cowl, so the rearview mirror stays where it's at. I'm a little worried about the frameless window design. You know, it works really well in premium vehicles and in luxury vehicles and in off-roader. Yeah, when, when you said that, I thought of like a Mercedes, uh, you know, two-door coupe. Exactly, kind of the same concept, yeah. but in an off-roader, you know, when you're getting mud and dirt and sand, I'm curious to see how that will withstand. I, I, um, got, I got a feeling we're going to see some broken windows <laughs> if you don't roll them down before you take them off. Did, did you actually get to take the doors off? How easy is it? 
it's not too difficult. Yeah, we, we actually took the whole hard top off on camera. They, they, we got a nice demonstration and we also removed the doors. Pretty simple procedure. Um, kind of an interesting thing is so the, the bags are optional, the storage bags, but you put the storage bag on the door when it still is attached to the vehicle. So you kind of slip it on and then you take out the uh, the bolts and pull them. I noticed in one of your TikTok videos that there's a little thing that says lift on the bottom of the door and a little handle so you can actually grab it. It's pretty smart, yep. The Bronco also has standard power windows so you can't get it with roll-up windows like you can in the Jeep. You know, somebody made a comment on one of the TikToks saying, you, you did a video saying that just like the Jeep, the uh, window controls aren't on the door but they're you know in the center console, right? Right. And they said, why, why does it matter if you're taking the door off, you don't need those controls? Why don't they just keep on the door? Yeah, I did read an interesting... <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. Well, but I did read an interesting reply. Yeah. So if you've got a four-door, yeah. what if you just want to take out the front two doors and you leave the rear two in? Then you can still control the windows on the rear two doors because... Yeah, but if you leave them in the door, you can still control them anyway. No, you can't. Right. Because if you pull the front two doors off, leave the rear two doors in, how are you going to roll up the window? Oh, I see. In the back, you can control on them. On the not back, the, yeah. I, yeah. But mm -hmm. on the front. Yeah, so maybe that's a reason. It's definitely a thing, and it's 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 been going on for right. a while. And, and you said you, you watched a demo. In the Jeep, you know, getting those uh, Freedom Tops off is a matter of, you know, it's not that hard. It takes probably about two minutes, right? There's, there's like these, like... Uh, levers that you open same exact system right and then, then you got these kind of they probably weigh like 10 pounds maybe each and they're kind of cumbersome and you got to kind of put them somewhere and usually put them in the back you put them in a bag and then they bounce around if you're off-road it's not it's not ideal any any different in the Ford? Nope, same same system pretty much for the the panels how about the back end of the Ford? is that heavy or light did they struggle with it nope they uh, had two guides lifted it right off it seemed pretty simple the one area I was very intrigued about though is the soft top configuration so the jeep you can get a soft top from the factory both in the two and the four door yep the ford you can only get the soft top in the four door from the factory but best top is doing an accessory top for the two-door version but that that's like an aftermarket deal okay so but here's here's where the things get really weird so in the jeep when you have the soft top and you want to get into the trunk you basically lift up the rear window yes you know it's a I it's know. a fabric and then a, a plastic rear window and you fold it over and that's how you get into the the trunk now the ford is totally different you can't lift up the rear window okay that's odd so you open up the tailgate yes you click two levers and then the entire rear portion of the top pivots up really the whole rear portion has the hinge on it and it pivots upward and that gives you more access to the back. So it's like an so it's like an SUV almost like that. You mean like a crossover back that opens up? No, I mean like the whole thing. Like the side windows come with it. Oh, I see, like a clam. Like a clam. Yeah, like a like a, cl a clam shape that the whole thing. Yeah, like the whole rear. Like, like on the Ford Lightning, like when the front opens up, the sides also open up, right? In the front, like that. Or like on the Lucid, where if you open up the trunk on the Lucid, the whole sides of the trunk also come up, not just the trunk. No, not really. It's kind okay. of like the hood of a E-type Jaguar or the hood of a Triumph Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about, the whole sides, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so the sides yeah. come up with Exactly, the, like, like the front of a, of a Lightning, the electric Ford. The whole side comes up. The lights and everything come up. No, I don't think they do on the Lightning. Yeah, on they the do. Lightning, it's just the hood. No, it's not. Let me Once look again, at the we, have the, we have these arguments all the time, me and Tommy, and he never believes me and I always win it. Uh, sometimes you don't always win I it. I always you never trust me, and yet I have a really good mind and you know head right. for details. Let's see. All right, he's I'm, looking up. I'm his looking phone. it up. Oh. I, I don't think that the, the uh, look, look, up the, would, look up the lucid and look up the lightning. No, that would in, entail oh. though that the fenders move up with look, the lightning. Look it up. The sides come up. Okay, I'm looking it up. Look it up. Anyway, while he's looking it up, they uh, do not come up. Let's see. They do not come up. Just the hood comes up. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I, look I won. At, look, at another, you, look, look at another picture. You heard it here first. Look, look I won picture. an argument. Here's look, another picture. From just, the side. Just the front comes up. From the up. side. The, the fenders don't come up. From the side. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right, it's right, this, anyway. I know what it looks like. Look at the, the Lucid. Side, look up the Lucid. The Lucid, I uh, will take a look at here. I don't the know lucid how the Lucid air. works. Look up the air. Look at the trunk on the air. Lucid air frunk. Trunk. It's the trunk, not the front. The trunk. Trunk. Yeah, so on the Lucid air, that is kind of the same deal, yeah. where the whole thing pivots up. Yeah. But... On the, the Ford, I really dislike that <laughs> on the Bronco. Okay. It, it, it's super cumbersome. There's two latches you have to undo at the same time with two hands. Okay. And if you're carrying something, it doesn't open up very high. And then when you do open it up, there's this little prop rod that comes down. I felt it to be not very well thought out. And I wonder if that's like a patent thing where they couldn't just have the glass open like on a, 
on a Jeep, but don't know. It, the hard top was a much better system on the Ford. The hard top works just like a Wrangler, where you open up the swing gate and then the glass lifts up. Okay, all right, let's keep going now. On a Wrangler, you can also drop the windshield. You can basically fold, fold it forward. Can you do that on a Bronco? You can't, but does that matter? I don't know. I'm just. I'm, I don't know if it matters. Uh, I have never seen a JL, the new Wrangler. I saw Jalopnik do it. Uh, yeah, I saw <laughs> what, on, on Jalopnik, if I and remember we, right. We, we watched, we watched uh, Mark Allen do it at the auto show. Jalopnik had a JK Wrangler, the previous yeah, it's, one. Uh, that was a pain in the butt. And it was so hard, they took the whole windshield off. Like, they removed the windshield. <laughs> but yeah, so on the new JL, you can fold the windshield, which is a cool thing, I guess. All right, all right. And then uh, the other thing on the Bronco windows, are these, like, iconic, I guess, because they're so now ingrained in my memory for a Bronco. These, like, two little, like, hoops at the front of the... Um, Hood, right? What are those for? Well, so you can use them as limb risers, and limb risers are when you attach a wire from the roof to the front of the vehicle. So when you're cruising through uh, the Amazon rainforest, right? You don't like like branches don't come and hit right. you in the windshield. Um, yeah. But the other option is you can use them to tie down long items you have sticking over the front. So okay. like a canoe is the first thing that comes to my mind. All it's right. got a weight rating of 150 pounds. Uh, but that's where you would attach longer items to. It's kind of a cool thing. I don't know how useful that is um, in the real world. So uh, the top situation go though goes very much deeper. And be the the fundamental design of the sports bar or the the roll bar is totally different between the two. Yeah. So like in the Wrangler, when you take off the roof, right, you have what's called a sports bar. And the reason it's called a sports bar and not a roll bar is because if you roll the Wrangler, it's not meant to provide structural rigidity to keep you from having your head crushed. It's meant to be a sports bar, right? And one of the things that the sports bar, I'm, I'm not saying when you roll the Wrangler, it's going to pancake, but I wouldn't count on it not so, pancaking. <laughs> anyway, it's, 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 it's there, we should clarify. It's not there for style. It is there to protect you in a rollover, but it's not like a race car roll cage, maybe. It's not a roll cage. Is yeah. a better way to what, describe will it, it. Will it hold up in a rollover? I don't know. I mean, it's supposed Dep to. Depends. It, it's not going to hold up falling off a cliff from right, 600 Right, right. Like, like, I remember watching a video uh, of Pikes Peak, by the way, which is happening this week. Uh, and there was a M something BMW that went flying off the mountain. And just, it was incredible. It just one of those, like, almost Monty Python has just kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And the guys just walked, or maybe it was an Evo, I don't know. The guy just walked out of it. And that's a roll cage, right? Roll cage, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, so it's not roll, a, a, roll bar, sports bar is very different right. than the roll anyway, cage. Anyway, it's yeah. this big, like, center structure. And the cool thing about it is that they mount speakers above the driver and passenger's head so you actually have pretty good audio in a Wrangler. Yes, but there's a problem with that. What's that? Well, have you ever sat in the back seat of a Wrangler? Yes, I have. You sure. spend your most of your time looking at the the cross member at the B pillar. Right. So how do, how does the Bronco do that? So the 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 Ford is an interesting kind of design where there's no crossbar from the connecting the left and the right side of the vehicle at the B pillar, right? like you would find in pretty much every Wrangler ever. So what they've done is they've eliminated that altogether and they just have the one at the rear where the C pillar is at. Okay. So it's a wide open space, which is a cool experience from when you're sitting in the back seat. Yeah. You can look up um, and there's no intrusion for your view. So, so you, just so we're doing car talk here, but uh, A pillar is the one that is on the windshield, the front windshield. The B pillar was the one between the you know the two doors, and the C pillar is the one way in the back. That's right. So that that's so that's what Tommy's talking about. It's the one where you like it'd be behind the head of the rear passenger. Now I don't know what that means for safety. I'm not a you know a safety engineer. I don't know if that has any impact. But I will say the impact is both pros and cons. The pro is when you look up in a Bronco, you don't see any intrusion above your head, which is right. cool. The cons are, like you mentioned, the Wrangler has speakers there. The, the Bronco does not have speakers there because there'd be nothing to mount them to. So they've mounted the Bronco's speakers all the way at the back at the C-pillar. And they look like what you'd find on a powerboat or oh, yeah, yeah. a Razor. Yeah, like those, those kind of round ones that are you know, yeah, stuck Yeah, kind of like yeah. that. Yeah, and they point forward toward the windshield. Okay. So on the Wrangler, uh, when they're mounted, they kind of point down right at your yeah. head. Yeah, they're, actually they sound really good. And now manufacturers have started incorporating speakers and seats just for that very reason. And the Bronco, they're all the way back at the C, C bar pointing forward. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, I'm not sure they've done any wonders for audio quality because the issue is with both the Bronco and the Jeep, they don't have doors. They don't have speakers in the doors because the doors come off. So the Ford has speakers in the dashboard, has speakers in the back, but there's nothing in between. So you really kind of have the sensation that 
all the sound from the driver's seat is coming from the front with not a lot coming from the rear. And there are uh, optional sound systems like the B&O, which incorporates a bigger subwoofer. But once again, a lot of sound at the back, a lot of sound at the front, but right where your ears are in the middle of the vehicle, kind of like a dead zone. And it almost sounds like someone put a really big Bluetooth speaker in the front, a really big Bluetooth speaker in the rear, but they're not really connected all that well. All right, now that we're talking about kind of the innards of the thing, uh, uh, a two-door a two door Wrangler back seat is, well, let's take a step back. When they introduced the Unlimited model, they didn't think the four door that anybody would buy it. And now the majority of Wranglers are sold as four doors. Uh, but a two door, uh, getting in the back is a pain in the butt, and then sitting in the back isn't grand. There's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of like leg room back there. Uh, and there's not a lot of room behind that second row, either in the two door or the four door. What's it like in the Bronco? Andre sat in the back seat of the Bronco with the two door. He seemed to fit okay. Entry he's tall. He's 6'3". Entry and egress actually seemed to be better than the Jeep. Okay. But the big game changer is that there's room behind the rear seats in the two door model. So a Jeep basically, the rear seats go up to the rear window. Yeah. And I mean, you just can't put anything back there. Especially without, the two door. Well, folding the seats. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Not, not four door, two door. Right. The two door Bronco actually has trunk room behind the rear seats, which is just a game changer. Um, and I really, really like that. That that was really well done. And, and the way that the Bronco uh, fold back seat is it the same as the Wrangler? In other words, you drop the back part of the seat, right, the backrest, and then you fold the thing forward. Does does the Bronco do the same thing? You remember? Does does the uh, does the rear seat in the JL fold and tumble? Yeah, I think it does. I don't. I don't remember. I think it does too. Yeah. Uh, it did in the JK. Um, I haven't been in a two-door Wrangler in forever. The, the Ford does not work like that. So the rear seat mechanism in the two-door Ford, the bottom cushion folds up against the front seats, and then the backrest folds forward. Okay. So right. it's, it's kind of like what they used to do in the old Jeep Cherokee XJ, and they used to do in all sorts so, of old SUVs. So my question now is, is the Bronco bigger, or is it just better packaging if you're saying there's more room? Honestly, I'd have to look at the spec sheet side yeah. by side because I don't know at the top of my head what the, the length difference is. But just sitting in it, even stopped, the thing feels very chunky compared to the Wrangler. Oh. Significantly bigger, significantly wider. It feels longer. Um, I mean, it just feels bigger in every dimension, which is a good and a bad thing. It's kind of like sitting in it next to a passenger is like... Um, sitting in a full-size truck compared to a mid-size truck. So the, the Wrangler is small. You you're sit pretty close to the passenger next to you. Um, the, the seat doesn't go back all that far. I mean, it feels pretty compact. The Bronco feels chunky. It feels much bigger. Yeah, I mean, one of my biggest issues, problems, I would say, with the Wrangler is I can't put that driver's seat far enough back, and then the driver's seat is actually, and the passenger seat is just very... Uh, poorly designed. I never feel comfortable in the thing. I can't get it in the right position. You're not going to have that problem in the Ford. The, the seat goes way beyond where I would feel comfortable sitting. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why they did that, but it always feels like I'm too close to the steering wheel. Like it's like, like right. I can never get the thing far enough back. And the other weird thing is, uh, like the seat only has that little strap if you want to fold it forward, right? It's not like there's not a not a, like a there's not a lot of electric controls to actually move it, right? There's it's no all manual. There's no electric right, controls manual. in the Jeep. So we'll, we'll talk about seats in a sec, but size-wise, pros, like I said, you get a lot more kind of just breathing space, but cons, it feels really big. And I like small vehicles, especially out on the trail. I like the nimbleness. This, this um, y you know, even before you drive it, does not feel that nimble. Just, just you sitting know, in it, it Sitting in big. it, it feels like a big, it feels like a truck almost, yeah. where the Bronco or the Jeep feels you know, pretty small and compact. So pros and cons there. Now the seats, like you mentioned, I got to say Ford just destroyed the Wrangler seats. Mm. Um, much further travel. So I'm 6'1". In a Jeep, I pretty much put the seat all the way back and then drive like that. If I put the seat all the way back in a Bronco, I'm not going to be touching the steering wheel practically. I mean, it's it really is a lot more room. You can also get the Bronco, like you mentioned, with power seats and with lumbar control on both the driver and the passenger seat. So every Wrangler and Gladiator I've ever been, and even the top trims, you, you can't get lumbar on the passenger side. Um, as far as I know, that's never an option. I bet you can in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on the Ford, you can. It, it's not standard, but you can get power seats and a lumbar on the passenger side. All right, now the other thing that Ford brought to the table, now Jeep did this uh, first, was they put a lot of like little uh, Easter eggs in it, right? So the Jeep's got like the old willies, you know, the, the flat fender driving up in the glass. Uh, it also has like 1941, 
Is that right? Since 1941? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of. Did Ford do the similar thing with Easter eggs? Yeah, the, the windshield says since 1966. Okay. Uh, it's got, in the hard top model, it's got these GPS coordinates where there's a Bronco obelisk. Okay. Apparently, they brought a surveyor out and they yeah. chose an exact point in Johnson Valley, California, where they built this Bronco obelisk because apparently that's where they did a lot of the durability testing and they wanted to like commemorate that. So there's a, I don't know what it looks like, but I, I heard there's some kind of statue or some kind of monument I'm at this exact GPS location. I'm sure there'll be a video out soon. Yep. And then there's like, once again, you open the fuel door, there's like the old Bronco driving along, and there's there's a whole bunch of those kind of little hidden, hidden treats. Now, the other thing that the Bronco brings to the table is they put like a GoPro or like a little mount right in front of the uh, driver on the dashboard. Isn't that right? Yeah, BYOD. Okay. Bring your own device. This is brilliant. All right. This shouldn't be just standard in a Jeep. This should be standard in every vehicle sold in America today. It is a little ball mount with these little adjustment screws, and you can put different heads on it, but you can put a phone mount, you can put a GoPro mount, and even more clever than that, there's a USB port about two inches in front of it, right at the base of the windshield, so you can plug it in your device. Really, really smart thinking. Um, I like that a lot. Wireless charging? Yep. Uh, it depends on which trim you get, obviously, and then it moves locations depending on whether or not you get the automatic or the manual. So the manual has it in the middle, the automatic has it more toward the front where the, uh, the, the, the dashboard is. All right, let's keep going. We've got a lot more to get through. So uh, let's start, uh, before we get to the electronics, which we'll get to as well, uh, but let's start talking about some of the other differences between the Wrangler and the Bronco. And let's start with the big one. Here it is, you know, the one that all the Bronco and Ford and Jeep fans are going to argue about forever, independent suspension versus solid axle. So the Ford has independent suspension. Yes. They do have independent suspension in the front, solid axle in the rear, body on frame construction. Hard to lift. Hard uh, to lift. I think there's lifts already for it. I'm sure, but I still, think it's, it's already been look, lifted. We've done, we've done enough lifts on Toyotas where it's a little trickier. There's it's a, a lot little more. trickier. I so, agree. So with, with you know with a solid axle, basically all you do is just you know put some kind of a you know a, a, an extension right between the axle and the rest of the vehicle, and you lift it, and then all you got to do is put on longer shocks if you want, right? It's not a big deal. Whereas with independent, there's a lot more pieces to it, so a lot more has to get changed. And when you do lift it, if you don't do it right, you change the geometry in a very significant way, giving you real, what we've done this with like Baby Yoda, right? When we lifted it, uh, the front uh, um, camber was off and it just drove really poorly. Wow, you are really freaked out by this. There I was. are There are way too many independent lifted suspension vehicles out there, I think, for this to be a big problem. Okay, I I'm, mean, just say, I'm just saying it's harder and it's more expensive. Every 4Runner in it's Colorado's been more lifted. Expensive. Every Tacoma in Colorado's been lifted. I think there's going to be a lot of ways around this. We just talked to that guy, uh, our buddy Steve, who lifted a Defender like six inches. Yeah, and how much it, you know how much it cost him? Uh, yeah, it was a lot of money, but he had full independent <laughs> suspension. Yeah, he just kind of glands over a lot of money. And oh, it's a lot of air money. suspension, but it's air suspension. I mean, there's ways around uh, yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, he really, I mean, when you say a lot of money, you mean a lot of money. So get this. This is going to really draw some people's attention okay. here. What is the big benefit of solid axles? Well, you get more articulation. Yes. And you get more... Uh, just, just stop there. Okay. That's good. That's good. Stop there. Um, <laughs> Ford says that with their um, sway bar disconnect, even with independent suspension, they're claiming more articulation in the front than a Wrangler. Yeah. They said about 17% more articulation in the front yeah. and 10% more articulation in the rear. That's you, what they're claiming. You, you know what the Wrangler says to that? What? Hold my beer. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure Jeep is not going to take that lightly. I am not convinced. Or in my case, hold my iced tea. <laughs> I am not convinced of that claim. And we're going to, you know, bring it to Colorado and really put it through its paces. Yeah, guys, by the way, you know, we kind of think and we hope that you guys agree that we're one of the premier I, I think from a journalistic standpoint we certainly are the premier off-road channel nobody else does as much off-roading as we do i mean just nobody does right think of any other publication out there and nobody does as much off-roading as we do uh and you know for the for that simple reason we bought an fj last year so that we could have a toyota product that competes even though i know it's not made anymore we also now have the defender for that reason uh, and the announcement coming up a little bit later in this podcast you'll see what else we're getting and then hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have have uh, the Bronco. So we'll have four vehicles that directly compete against each other. And we're going to put them through a series of tests, not only the TFL ORI index, right? And speaking of ORI, we'll get to that in a second. That's the off-road index to see actually which one is better by the numbers. But we'll also do it, you know, 
in kind of uh, all kinds of different situations. So we're lucky to have like Colorado off-roading, then we can go to Moab and do, you know, sand off-roading and Moab off-roading. So we're going we're gonna to test all of those. We're going to find out which of these four is the, the, the true king of the off-roaders. The only one we don't have is a G-Wagon, and that's because one of those would cost as much as all four of the others. <laughs> it's true. All right, so back all right, all right, to so, so the suspension back, systems. Okay. So uh, the reason I'm not convinced, and you're going to have to watch the video and – you know, let me know what you think. We, right. we drove it through some moguls and just, I really want you to go to TFL Off-Road this Monday and watch the video and see if you think it has as much articulation yeah. on the 28th. So yeah, independent. It also has a sway bar disconnect, yes. a hydraulic sway bar disconnect, which is very interesting. And once again, check out the video. It can do some pretty wild stuff. Okay. And then um, locking differentials. So f front locker and a rear locker. Uh, are available, and there's also something called turn assist, which is like the Toyota. Yeah, right it's a feature the Land Cruiser has had for a while. Yeah, but it basically breaks the inside tire so you when you're tighter, making turtles. when so you're making a tight off. turn, so yep. that it'll actually uh, decrease the turning radius. And can you unlock? Can you lock the front diff without locking the rear diff? It's very cool. You can. Yes, Ooh, you can just cool. push a button, and it will lock the front. Unclick it. It'll unlock. I could see it. that being useful in some very specific situations, but nevertheless, you know, very cool. Yeah, when you're trying to like a uh, rock crawl up, and you want to just open up the front, like the like the hot tubs, for instance, that might be a good use of that in Moab. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's not an Atlas transfer case. You can't disconnect right, the right. rear axle. Yeah, I know, but you're locking it. But anyway, yeah. anyway that, we're getting deep in the weeds. So let's keep going. How about tire size? That's kind of the big thing, right? Everybody who buys a Wrangler, uh, first thing they do is they go out and put some 35s, and probably nowadays it's more like 37s. Obviously, with the Wrangler, you can go up to, what, 37s without doing anything to the fenders? Nope. 35? I think it's 35s, but only on certain trims. Yeah, on the, the Rubicon, yeah. So the Ford is available from the factory with smaller tires in the 30, 32 inch range. And then if you get the Sasquatch, you can get, they claim it's a 35. It's, I think Andre said like a 34.4, but it's a big, big tire. Um, and that's from the factory, you know, fully warranted, all that. So once again, Jeep says, uh, hold my iced tea. Uh, okay. More news right. coming all on right. that front. Okay. Right. okay. I'm, just, I'm, I just, right. I'm just saying, hold my iced tea. More news coming. They're also, Ford is claiming, if we're talking about numbers, approach angle pretty similar between the Bronco and the Jeep, but Ford... Hold my iced tea. Ford is saying <laughs> we've got the winner on uh, breakover and departure. Dude, this is going to be an all-out brawl. I mean, I, 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 I have no doubt uh, that Ford has taken it, you know, directly to Jeep with this model, and knowing the guys over at Jeep, they're not going to sit... And you know, on their hands, and take you know whatever Ford is dishing out, they're gonna they're gonna you know return it in space. I can't wait to see this contest. It's and gonna be it's gonna be great for all of us off roaders. And Jeep is also low on um, water fording currently, uh -huh. according to the Ford. They're also lower on crawl ratio okay. uh, compared to the Ford. But we're gonna have to wait and see. How about skid plates? How they respond? Yeah, they both have pretty pretty darn beefy skid plates. You all can, underneath the whole thing, so pretty much. Yep, yeah. you rock can, rails. Uh, yep. Okay. From the factory, both can be had with rock rails. Both can be had with modular steel front bumpers. How about towing? Towing is the same. Actually, Bronco, I think, is a little better because I think that the two-door version of the Bronco can tow up to 3,500. Versus 3,000. No, so four-door four door Bronco versus four-door Jeep yeah. both have a max of 3,500. I think Bronco can tow a little bit more in two-door If you guys are towing with these, don't. They're not good towing vehicles. They're just not. Well, we don't know. We haven't towed with the Bronco. It might be really good. We have towed with the Jeep, and it's not great. Yeah, the Jeep it, is not very good. Yeah, Maybe the Bronco will be bad too, but we'll see how that. Yeah, you think they would be, but they're not. At least, okay, the, the, you know, they're just you know, you're better off with a truck. There's a lot better SUVs out there for towing that are more set up for it. All right, so how about bumpers, Tommy? Bumpers, um, both can be had with modular steel front bumpers. Both are you know equipped with recovery points. Pretty similar. All right. Uh, and let's talk about electronics. Uh, yeah. Because that's a big difference, right? In the Jeep, I'll go over what the Jeep has, right? A Wrangler basically has a big lever. So you could be in four too high, four auto, or four low, uh, depending on where you put the lever. Uh, and getting getting into those gears can be a little bit clunky, right? There's, so There's a little bit of, like, muscle required. Jeep and Ford are both offering a couple different transfer case options. Yep. Both can be had with the four-wheel drive auto system. Yep. Ford uses buttons rather than um, Lever. levers, and then Ford also incorporates GOAT modes, goes over any terrain modes. I thought that stood for greatest of all time. It stands for goes over <laughs> any terrain, and there is a little 
basically ring you twist on the four wheel drive selector and it changes it from rock crawl to normal to eco to you know there's a ton of them depending on which trim so you get. jeep has one off-road mode there's an off-road plus mode on the jeep yeah. which configures it a little differently whether or not you're in four high or four low and how about uh, the pages right jeep has like off-road pages where you get an inclinometer yep Ford's, uh, Ford's you, you, you kind of see where you know what's locked up what isn't locked pretty up. pretty similar yep very similar on the on the bronco it's um the, the one that's really useful is in the gauge cluster. Part, the gauges are very different, so the Jeep has analog speedometer and tack with a central screen. The Ford has a analog speedometer only, and then the rest is all digital. So the digital tack. And How big the, is the screen on the Ford? Does, the, it, does it change based on model? Probably. The, the which screen? The m big central screen. Oh, the big central screen changes on model so there's an 8 inch and a 12 inch okay the 12 inch looks great it's the same system in the f-150 and what what version of sync is it running i don't know is it Zinc 5 wanna, is it the one in the mach-e or is no, it, is it the previous one the, like a four i think, I think it's four, four. Okay. but it looks really good i mean Ap it, apple it, carplay yeah yeah all that android auto oh yeah it's uh it's got a really big screen and it looks very crisp the jeep currently has um a little baby screen a seven inch screen and an 8.4 so they've beaten them on screen size that's for sure and I but, like the but, sync system. It's good. But I gotta say, you connect. I love you connect. You connect is a great system. I, I would, it works I would very say you well. connect is one of the best systems out there. I would put sync kind of at least the the not five. Five is a little bit better, but the the four. I would put it at like okay if. If the best is 10 and the worst, which is like, uh, gosh, uh, well, Acura has a pretty clunky one, is a one, I would put you connected probably at an eight or a nine, and I would put Sing 4 probably like a five mid range. Yeah, but. In terms of ease of use, at least. Yeah, but what about camera tech? I mean, the Ford you can have with a yeah, what about camera tech? 360 degree camera on the Ford. Like a Defender. Does it have that cool Defender feature where you can actually see the, the vehicles if you're if there's a, like, if there's, there's a videography the, behind the third you? third person yeah. point of view? No. And then you've never can you see through the hood? Do you even know where that button is on the Defender? Do you even know how to use that yeah, button? Yeah, I know. I use it today. Really? Yeah, because when, when, when I had to back it up into the garage. That, that like bird's eye view yeah, thing? Yeah, and I didn't want to hit the TRX. I used it and it worked. Where it goes to third person yeah. and like it yeah. shows you, you know, yeah. like you're in a video game. Yeah, and I also... And, and then I'd actually, be amazed actually, if you know where that button is. I used it. And uh -huh. actually, Tommy, to, to be absolutely honest, I also used yesterday. So me, Nathan, um, Case, and... Uh, Alex, when scouting for a new off-road off-road area to do our dirt bike stuff for TFL bike, yep. Uh, and I was pulling into this little like parking area in front of a river there along the Boulder Canyon, and it broke down. No, no, it didn't break down. It was <laughs> great, uh, and I didn't know how far I could go before plummeting into the river. So I used a feature where you can see through the hood of the Defender and actually see what's in front of the wheel, so I could see how far I could go before plummeting into the river. Interesting. Yeah, I used both of them yesterday. Well, you can't do that on the Ford. You can't see through the hood. And, and the other one I the used, which see was, through the hood thing is which, which almost was, pointless. No, I it was great. Never needed no, that. And, and and the one that was absolutely useless, backing into the garage. I also used a feature where the Defender has that third camera, right? That that takes the place of the rearview mirror. Yep. When you're backing up, that's useless. It's too high. The, right. I couldn't even even the TRX. I couldn't tell how far I was from it. So anyway, yeah, I love camera tech. I think it's great. Tommy maybe disagrees, but I used all three of those features. So Ford has a 360 degree camera. Yeah, Jeep has a front facing camera, but Ford has a full 360 camera. All right. Uh, what good. are the tires? What kind of tires? Um, what are the tire uh, <laughs> They're Goodyear. Uh, Wrangler Territory tires. Okay. There's a big stink, and I don't actually know what the... I think they're Goodyear Wrangler Territories. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right on the Sasquatch. It depends on the trim. I think that, like, for example, the Black Diamond has Generals. Steel wheels, by the way. You can get steel wheels. You can steal these, huh? Two different steel wheels, and they are real steel. I asked them. Um, good and bad. W well... Good because they're cool, uh, and good because, you know, if, if you ever hit them, you can pound them out, right? Right. Whereas, like, an aluminum wheel, once it breaks... Crack. It cracks. Yeah. Uh, but they rust, you know, and they do dent easier. So um, the the Bronco also has a bunch of different tire choices. There's like a, a, Sox, a Dueler, be like capable, but yeah, you can't sell. Yeah. Yep. Uh, depending on the trim, Duelers. I saw Duelers on one. I saw Generals on another one. So it depends a lot. But so tire size definitely Bronco is beating Wrangler from the factory currently. Hold my iced tea. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I've said that too much. I, I think I'm getting. Getting to the point where it's becoming annoying, so I will shut up. I apologize, dear so, listener and viewer. Okay, two things I really like about the Bronco as we're yeah. cruising along here. 
We got we got to finish this. I, I thought this was really smart. Jeep is super stingy on lockers. Yeah. So on the Wrangler, they pretty much say if you want lockers, you have to get the Rubicon. Yep. I mean that's the only way to do it. Yep. You can get a limited slip, which is nice, but you can't get a locker unless you get a Rubicon. Well, they they used to do like a limited rear locker on some models. It was like a very rare option for a short I amount of time. On, I think it was on the Black Bear edition. I think that one had. It was like one trim. I was talking to my buddy Brandon at Jeep, and he was like, "For a, I think it was a, wasn't it the Black Bear? I don't, I don't." I there's so many different. That. Yeah, there's so many different. Versions. But currently, if you want a locker in a Wrangler, you have to get both of them, and it has to be in the Rubicon. Yep. Ford is much more liberal. You can get certain trims with rear lockers. Um, some have none, but you can get you know rear lockers that they just kind of like give them out like candy. Like here, I have a rear locker, and I love that. I think that's really really a smart thing. Uh, the other thing I like is the vinyl floor option in the Ford. They, it's called marine grade vinyl, but it's a, it's a rubber floor and like the black diamond. Loved it a lot. Thought that was really really well done. How about how about the interior? Uh, you know, I think the Wrangler actually with the JL especially. Okay, the JK was a little plasticky. Uh, but the JL, they really upped the interior quality, and for the most part, it's really nice. How about, you know, Ford, in my mind, always does this thing where, like, the parts you touch are nice, but then the parts you don't touch are a little cost cutty. Ford has done a pretty good job with that. So, the, the, the design is very good. I really like the interior design. Um, the top of the dash, I think, is very tinny compared to the Wrangler. If you're into playing bongos on the top of your dash, the Wrangler feels better. The main dash panel is nicer in the Wrangler, especially the Rubicon with the red. Um, I think that the implementation of the surround for the info screen is better in the Ford. The biggest problem with the Ford and the interior wise is the kind of center console by the cup holders really didn't like the plastic. It's this, I almost, it looks like it's a pre-production plastic. And I had to make sure with the Ford PR team, like, are these representative of the final models? And they said, yes, these are representative of the final materials. I mean, it's like this shiny gray plastic, which doesn't seem to match anything else. It's around the shifter and the cup holder, you know, down there. And it just does not look or feel very good. It's not texturized like the rest of the materials. I don't know what that feels. How about seat material? Feels. Seat material is awesome. I really love the cloth seats. I thought they were really cool. Uh, the cloth seats have... Um, you know, standard cloth inserts with like this denim surround. You can get it in this almost neoprene material. The leather felt really good. Seat material is really good. Touch points, like you mentioned. As long as you don't get the base model with the plastic steering wheel, which doesn't feel good, but the rest of the Bronco steering wheels, leather wrap, stitched, feel nice. Comfortable places for your elbows. Uh, the knobs generally feel really good. Nice kind of rubbery grips. So interior, I'd say quality-wise, in certain areas, the Wrangler is better. In other areas, I think the Ford is better. But um, for an off-roader, both functional. The Ford has drain holes. The, you know, they've incorporated that just like Jeep. So smartness there. Um, other things I, I wasn't too pleased with, the manual transmission is a crawler gear, which is very cool. Um, and like the old, like the old pickup truck. Yeah, like the old school pickup where yeah, you had like the yeah. granny low, right? Yeah, like our old uh, big green, right? But it has a electronic parking brake and I hate electronic parking brakes I and manual too. I can't stand electronic. They're so finicky yeah. and it's not in a prominent location either. Even on the manual transmission Bronco, it's down by your left knee. I'm like, ah, what the heck were they thinking there? But other good things compared to a Wrangler. I mean a lot kind of more standard features. You know, if you look at a base model Wrangler, you've you, got like I, a look, look, you know Ford benchmark the Wrangler. You know they put a big Wrangler uh, spreadsheet up on their wall and they went and just benchmarked everything that the Wrangler does in terms of equipment, in terms of pricing, in terms of uh, trim levels, and then they just went, you know, click, this is where the Wrangler's at, this is where we're at, and I'm sure it was like one click higher always, right? Yeah, but if you look at like base to base, yeah. Ford, I th they do some stuff which is nice. Power locks, standard. Yeah. Power windows, standard. How about this one? Air conditioning. Standard. Yeah, I, I think Jeep, you know air, air think, conditioning is a big it, deal. I think Jeep has gotten away with you know making things that are standard on many vehicles, uh, not standard on the Wrangler because it's been the only one in its class uh, for the most part. You know that that, that that doesn't have a lot of competition. Sure, the Forerunner sort of kind of competes, but there was no direct head-to-head -head competition, and that allows you to do things like you know I think they charge what thirteen hundred dollars for air conditioning. Yep. And that may change, Tommy. That may change. You know what else is standard on the Bronco? What? Which should be on the Jeep? What? LED headlights. Yeah, that's... A, well, okay, so... <laughs> Here's the funny thing about LED headlights, and, and I'm wondering if this is going to also happen on the Bronco. Uh, Jeep has both LED headlights uh, in the front and the rear, because, and because it's a Jeep, right, they're kind of... No, no, halogens. 
No, they, they have LEDs. You can get LEDs. I'm saying. Oh, can, but but base right. is halogen. Right, but like if you live in places like LA, they get stolen like crazy because it's like two screws. You can pop them out. Same thing for the for the rear ones, uh, and that's because you know it's very easily upgradable or changeable. And unfortunately, the thieves have figured that out, and so they're you know they're taking advantage of that. I don't think. Well, why would that be a problem on the Bronco? If because they, they also steal them. Yeah, but why? What would they do with them? I mean, Sell them to people with broken. <laughs> yeah, hold up though. I think the reason that they're so stolen in LA is because a lot of Jeeps have halogens and they're expensive to upgrade to LEDs. So people steal them out of LED Wranglers and then sell them to folks with halogens. I don't know. But I if every I Bronco has LEDs, yeah, they'll well, still get stolen. I don't anyway, know. it's an issue. Uh, they're expensive. I mean, it's not like people are stealing headlights out of F-150s. Why would they be stealing them out of I'm just saying they're, easy to, they're, they're pretty easy I to get. I don't think it's easy to steal a headlight in a... I don't know how, what the Bronco headlight d- design is. How about, how about like. safety tech? Does, does uh, uh, Wrangler offer um, the same... Or comparable safety tech to the new Bronco? Um, I think Ford offers slightly better safety tech. One of the things the Japanese, of course, are doing is they're, you know, they're giving all this basic suite of safety uh, tech now standard on all well, their vehicles. It's, it's even, not that. Even, even, like our Subaru, right? The Crosstrek. Right. Even has like uh, autonomous braking. It has, um, uh, you know, eyesight, which means that it can see the lane. So, you know, you can turn on proximity, distance control, and cruise control, turn on the eyesight, and then the vehicle pretty much steer itself as long as you've got your hands on the wheel? I, 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 yeah, I mean, I think safety tech is a little better in the Ford. The one thing I'm, I'm really curious about is actual real-world fuel economy. The, the Ford fuel economy numbers are not looking super hot. Yeah, eco or boost, Tommy. I mean, we're talking like <laughs> mid-teens depending on the trim. Yeah, I, you, I, look, look I, I think if you want uh, fuel efficiency, go for the 4 by either. Just, that just blows everything. I think or it's the what, diesel. Or the Eco diesel, diesel, yeah. What's the four by? Is it forty something? EP? No, forty. Yeah, MPG combined. No, on the four by E. Yeah, it's not that high. I think it's twenty three when you run out of electricity. No, no, combined. When, in, in the one in general, not when you run out. When you when you're running on both. Yeah, that's that's the combined number. No, there's no. MPG E. Yeah, which is when it's only an electric. Right. Yeah. But they, they can't compare MPG. Well, do, do, to do, do, now you're arguing with me. Don't you know? People, this is where you're going to get all the nasty comments, Tommy. People can drive it only on electricity. Well, yes, when you're driving it on electricity. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. Electricity uses less gasoline than a gas engine. That's very true. But I mean, you could buy a four by and conceivably never put any gas in it. It only goes 20 miles. So. Look, I love the 4xe. I'm just, I'm, a, just, I'm just saying, you know, if you want fuel economy, get the 4xe. That's a no-brainer, dude. No-brainer yeah. by, 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 by a long shot. Here's the problem with the 4xe. We're not talking about... The 4xe, oh, if when it runs out of electricity, it actually gets worse fuel economy than an equivalent 2-liter turbo. Oh, god. You know, I, 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 like, I, I love look, the 4xe. I, 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 I love plug-in hybrid. I am not going to I'm not gonna ding Jeep on that. I am just grateful that there is actually the, the what is it, the second hybrid in... Stellantis' lineup is a Jeep Wrangler. I think that is way cool. I am so happy that uh, they're taking, you know, electrification seriously. Uh, and Just uh, just you wait. Just uh, this thing. Yeah. I, my prediction, by the end of this year, they're going to have um, announced the plug-in hybrid version. Uh, I don't know, dude. Maybe they've announced it, but, you know, they've got to build 125,000 of them. And where, where are they going to get the capacity to all of a sudden start adding, you know, uh, an electrified version of it? Mark my words, by the end of this year, we will and learn does, about Does Ford even have uh, a hybrid? I mean, you can get the hybrid Escape, right? But it's got 1.5 kilowatt hour battery, which is not going to, that's not really, that's not yep. really going to do much. There was a plug-in hybrid Escape, and then that kind of right, was yeah. taken off the menu. Exactly. I don't really know what happened there. Um, so they have the Mach-E, so they have... Yeah, they, I mean, it's like... I mean, if it's I were... It's not like they have... Look, if I were Ford, I would just go right to the electric Bronco, but that's me. I, would, I wouldn't even mess around with the plug-in hybrid at this point because you're already behind the ball, so just leapfrog to the next, you know, to where it's going anyway. Okay, well, um, I think that's pretty much Bronco covered. Okay, yeah, we, that was an in-depth look at Bronco. So there's one last question, actually two last questions that I have to ask, okay? Okay. First question is, if it were your money, which of those that you saw would you buy? Um, what's the one that? Which what's, Bronco what's, would I buy? Yeah, what's the sweet spot? The Black Diamond is a, the best one. It's the Willys competitor, so it's like the quote every man off roader. It's not as crazy as the Badlands, which has the Rubicon stuff, but it still has a real locker, the vinyl grade floor seat. So we're talking thirty plus black thousand. steel wheels. I think it starts at thirty six. Andre said. Okay. Um, Two door manual transmission. Black Diamond. Okay. All right. And then <laughs> what's the off road you bought that you're picking up on Friday? 
Um, I bought a, well, I ordered it back in April because I couldn't find one that met my kind of my exact wants, but I did purchase, or am I going to purchase, a uh, base model Wrangler Willys. So it's a two-door Wrangler Willys with air conditioning and nothing else, no power locks, Every, no power windows. Everything you need and nothing you don't. Well, we're going to find out if we need some of that stuff, but yeah, I think it's really a perfect sweet spot in the Jeep lineup. I'm super stoked about it. It's got the little tiny screens, um, it's got a manual transmission and a V6, and I'm just so excited. So we're going to go pick it up on Friday. And this is your, your buying, not the company. Yes, buying. this is my personal personal buying uh, vehicle. It's my first new car I've ever bought, so I'm really nervous, uh, but also excited. And ironically, uh, even with the Bronco coming, Jeep is selling Wranglers at the highest rate ever. Uh, they're just setting record after record in terms of Bronco, in terms of uh, Wrangler sales, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, I, I think we are all in for, you know, if, you're, if you love off-roaders, I think we're all in for some really great days of, you know, fierce competition. Uh, and a TFL, for us, that means, you know, we're going to have four of the best off-roaders in the biz to compare. I can't wait because I can't wait to find out, you know, which one is the best. Because that's, that's at the end of the day, that's what we do. Yeah, and leave us a comment in the uh, section below um, if you're watching this on YouTube. And send us an email if you want and have more questions. But as always, this has been Tommy. And Roman saying, check out TFL Car for Bronco Week presented by our friends at Five Star Tuning. Um, you know, if you're gonna be buying a Bronco and you wanna tune it, there's no better company than those guys. Uh, they've been tuning Ford's, you know, pickup trucks for a long time, so they certainly know what they're doing. Uh, and go to TFL Car every day this week. We're gonna have a new Bronco video. So all this stuff that we talked about, you can actually, uh, you know, get a much more in-depth uh, look at. But thank you, Tommy, for all the hard work. Yeah, you thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to Ford, and I will have to get it back to Colorado and put it through some more tests. Yep, hopefully soon. I, I think soon. See you guys next time. Ciao.